Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. (laughs) The Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who we find covered with oil and grease, having just finished fixing Bertie's sewing machine. Well, your sewing machine is all fixed now, Bertie. You should hear that singer hum. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Is it all right to use now? Oh, yes, indeed, Bertie. Go right ahead. No reason now why you can't sew on the little so-and-so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Now I can run up my new summer uniform for the mysterious and bewildering order of the Daughters of Cleopatra. Oh, yes. Yeah. What kind of a summer uniform? Oh, we just switch from the heavy to the lightweight veil. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Uncle Mort. Hi. Hello, Bertie. Hello. Say, Unc, how'd you get all that oil on your hands and face? You look like you've been playing post office in a grease pit. If yeah. post office in a grease pit? Well, I never played post office there, though I never mind the frantic antics of my youth. I look this way because I just finished fixing Bertie's machine. Yes, and now I just puts my foot on the pedal and away it goes. Yeah. Couldn't have been a better job done if a real mechanic done did it. Yes, of course not. I'm an expert. Don't forget, I had hundreds of them at the Gildersleeve Girdle Works. Anytime... <laughs> anytime we had a breakdown, I'd bounce right out of my office and fix the trouble before the motor had a chance to slow down. Gee, I never knew that. Why, well, I, I could take a machine like Bertie's apart... And put it together again in the dark in less time than it take the average mechanic in broad daylight. And another thing, a bell. Oh, my goodness. A visitor mustn't see me in this disgraceful condition. I hope there's plenty of hot water for you. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Oh, hello, Miss Banks. Come right in. Thanks, Bertie. Oh, Marge, Penny Banks is here. My, my, that ain't the snappish uniform I ever did see. What, you supposed to be a lady general? <laughs> no, Bertie, this is the Red Cross Motor Corps uniform. Well, what do you folks do, doctor sick automobiles? No, but we're supposed to know how to fix our own cars. Well, I have to get back in the kitchen before Leroy hollers at his feeling holler. <laughs> Here's Marjorie, Betty. Oh, sorry to have kept you waiting, darling. Well, you needn't have hurried. I don't think we'll be able to start the motor mechanics course this afternoon after all. We won't? Why not? Well, Mr. Cobb, who was supposed to show us how to tear down a motor, can't be there. Oh, that's too bad. Gee, it'll be almost impossible to reach the girls and tell them not to come. Yeah. I don't know what we can do. Oh, gee, why don't you ask Uncle Mort to teach you? Does he know anything about automobile motors? Oh, sure, he's a whiz. He can take whole cars apart and put them together blindfolded in the dark. Well, I never knew that, Leroy. (laughs) I, I didn't either up until a few minutes ago. But he's fixed up Bertie's old jalopy so that she just puts her foot down on a pedal and away she goes. Oh, no, Leroy. No one could repair that coffee grinder. Well, Uncle Mort did. He used to fix all the trucks at his girdle works himself before they could even come to a stop. <laughs> well, it sounds like your uncle can save the day for us, Marjorie. Shall we ask him? Well, this is all news to me, but why not? Oh, Uncle Mort. Uh, yes, Marjorie? Can you come here for a moment? Oh, I certainly. What is it, my dear? Uh, hello there, Penny. Hello. Oh, uh, my, you look attractive in that outfit. Oh. Hey, by the way, what outfit is that outfit for? <laughs> well, it's the Red Cross, and we need your help. Why, certainly. How much, my oh, dear? Just a couple of your hour- hours of your time, Uncle. Uh? We'd like to have you come over to headquarters and show us how to take apart and put together a motor. Like you did for Bertie, Unc. Oh, yes, Bertie's, of course. The Red Cross used a lot of them. When do you want me? Oh, this afternoon, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, come, come, Penny. Don't be formal. Just call me Uncle Mort. Uh, well, will you, Uncle Mort? Oh, well, I'm sure you could get somebody, well, somebody better qualified. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, don't be modest, Uncle. Uh, You'd be I'm wonderful nervous. for this. Uh? Besides, the man we wanted couldn't show up. Oh, well, I don't know. Oh, I... you wouldn't want to disappoint all those pretty girls. Oh, uh, pretty girls. Well, <laughs> of course, if you put it that way, <laughs> I'll come. <laughs> oh, fine. Huh? And you'd better make your talk fairly simple. Some of our girls don't know the difference between a hose connection and a garter. Oh, they don't, eh? Well, I'd have a hard time telling them apart myself. <laughs> 
Of course, that's stretching it a little bit. <laughs> oh, Uncle Mort, always joking. Oh, uh... <laughs> Tell the truth, I'm not so sure about several things myself. Now, take the differential. Uh, no, thank you. If I did, I wouldn't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now be serious, Uncle Mort. Uh? You sound uh... as if you didn't know a thing about cars. I don't. But I know sewing machines from bobbin to shuttle. Oh, sewing machine. Oh, Uncle. Really, Marjorie, your uncle says the most amusing thing. Well, I don't see why you have to go into stitches about sewing machines. Oh, he's just an old kidder. Uh, glad you liked it. Well, let's get going now. Oh, come on. Oh, be down at headquarters at two, please, Uncle Morris. Ah, uh, goodbye, Leroy. Bye. Don't be late, Uncle. Uh, goodbye, girls. Uh, Leroy. What's so funny about sewing machines? Were they giving me the needle? <laughs> I don't know. You were the one who brought them up. Well, I did not. They asked me to come to Red Cross headquarters and show the girls how to take care of them, didn't they? Oh, no, no. Not sewing machines. Automobiles, Unc. Uh, what? Oh, but I never... Oh, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Gee, what's wrong, Unc? I don't know anything about automotors, Leroy. Why, on half of the new cars, I don't even know how to raise the hood. <laughs> Mort, I didn't mean to get you in this jam. Where are we going? To find the mechanic to fix my lecture. <laughs> now, uh, this garage we're coming to, my... No, dear. no, no soap, Unc. Look, this shop closed Saturday afternoons. Oh, leaping lima beans. Come on, Leroy. <laughs> What a town this is. So far, only one mechanic who works on Saturday afternoons, and he can't speak English. Well, cheer up, Unc. Maybe there's one here. I hope so. I'm getting corns on my bunions. Well, uh, now that I've explained the whole thing to you, mister, how about coming with me? Who, me? Oh, I ain't no mechanic. You're not? Then what are you doing in this garage wearing overalls and carrying a wrench? Oh, I'm the plumber. Yeah. Come on, Uncle Mort, let's go inside. You're 30 minutes late already. Good. Maybe the girls have all gone home by now. No. No, they've waited. They have? There's a whole gang of them inside. Boy, are they keen lookers. They look like a bunch of magazine covers. Yeah, well, this is the first time I'd rather be looking at popular mechanics. <laughs> Oh, come on now, Uncle Mort. Give him the old line. Yeah, and he'll take the old line and hang me with it. Oh, well, there's Marge, and she sees us. Yeah. We can't back out now. No. Oh, come in, Uncle Mort. Oh, thank you, Marjorie. Hey, uh, sorry we're late. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. I didn't know you were coming along, too. Oh, I figured if I came and listened to Uncle Mort, I'd hear things I never knew before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Penny. Penny, here's Uncle Mort now. Oh, at last. Uh, girls... Girls, here's a man who can tear a motor down and put it back together again, blindfolded, just as easily as he can with his eyes open. Well, that's no lie. Shh, Leroy. <laughs> girls, I want you to meet Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Yes. Hello, girls. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, come, come. Don't call me Mr. Gildersleeve. It just call me Uncle Moore. Oh, and this is Mrs. Salisbury Twitchell, Uncle Mort. Oh, yes. Now, how do you do? Uh, <laughs> uh, charmed, Mrs. Twitchell. The pleasure's all mine. I dare say you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Twitchell's been kind enough to lend us her station wagon, Uncle. And you're sure, Mr. Gildersleeve, that you're an expert in these matters? Oh, don't worry about your benzene buggy, Mrs. Twitchy. <laughs> You'd be surprised at just how much I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, if all you sweet young things will gather around, and uh, you too, Mrs. Twitchell, <laughs> I'll explain all the important features. Excuse me. Mind if I come in and listen? Oh, hello, Judge Hooker. What are you doing here? Oh, I just came down to see you in action, Gildy, old pal. <laughs> Bertie told me where you were, and I figured I might learn something. <laughs> The old goat. <laughs> hey, ladies, this is Judge Hooker. How you doing, ladies? A uh, judge who never has to lay down the law, because after he's through with it, it lays down by itself. <laughs> now, now, Gildy, suppose you stop gassing and get started. Yes, all right. Uh, now, ladies, in studying the modern motor, uh, the first thing we encounter is the hood. Every car should have a hood. 
Uh, do I make myself clear? Oh, yes, Uncle Mowat. Uncle Mowat. <laughs> That's right. We're all one big family here at Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the hood uh, covers the motors, I said. Uh, uh, well, now that we've covered the motor... Uh... Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Uncle. Yes. Suppose you tell us what goes on under the hood when you start the motor. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, maybe you'd like to tell the girls, Judge. No, 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 no. I wouldn't rob you of the pleasure for anything. You just go right ahead. Yes, all right. Um, now, uh, first you touch the starter. That starts the car. Unless, of course, you forget to turn on the ignition key. Well, uh, suppose you turn the key and step on the starter, but the battery is dead. Who is that? <laughs> oh, yes, I see you now, my dear. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, that brings us down to uh, dead batteries. Now, a dead battery... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes. You aren't finished with the motor yet. In fact, you haven't started it. Well, how can I with a dead battery? <laughs> Yes. Now, uh, to get back to the motor, or as we experts call it, the engine. Uh, uh, the strange thing about an engine is that it might be missing and still be right there. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, this happens when the spark plugs fail. And, uh... Then the last of the gas is exhausted out of the exhaust. Yeah. Well, that reminds me, I'm exhausted myself. Uh, here's a chair, Uncle Moore. Uh, thank you. Nice car. Let's get out of here pretty soon. You're right. Well, uh, if it's all clear to you now, ladies... Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sure the girls have loads and loads of questions for you. Yes, that's what I thought, you backseat driver. <laughs> all right, girl. Well, uh, isn't the muffler supposed to keep the motor warm? And how often do you oil the fan belt? If you have an electric heater, do you still need a radiator? Uh, well, yes and no. <laughs> uh, those are very good questions, girls. Uh, shows you were paying attention. <laughs> now, suppose we take them up, say, uh, next week. Oh, let's finish them up now. The afternoon is still young. Yes, but I'm not. Oh. <laughs> relax, relax. I figured out a nice, simple way for you to answer all the girls' questions. Uh, what's that, Judge? Just show them everything you've been talking about by taking the motor all apart. Why, that's a splendid idea, Uncle Mort. Oh, Marjorie, my own flesh and blood, too. <laughs> oh, that should be very interesting, shouldn't it, girl? Uh, I think I I Don't you think so, Mrs. Twitchell? Well, I'm not sure. I know less about automobiles now than I knew when I came here. <laughs> It's beyond me how anyone who looks so simple can make everything look so complicated. <laughs> Go ahead, Gildersleeve. Uh, you double-crossing dodo. I'd be glad to do it, folks, only I didn't bring any tools. Oh, well, there's a complete set in the car, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, fine. Uh, too bad I'm wearing my best clothes, though, isn't it? What, that zoot suit? Yep. <laughs> Coveralls, Uncle. Gee, I just found them. Yeah, coveralls. Well, well, isn't that just peachy? Your uncle's little helper, aren't you, Leroy? <laughs> yes, sir. There's a place over here where you can put them on, Uncle. Oh, well, after such a build-up, I guess I'll have to tear down the motor. Here, come on, Leroy. Here, hold my coat. Young man, what's the big idea? Uncle, I found an instruction book and a catalog of parts in that lady's car. It shows how to fix the motor, too. Oh, fix the motor? Oh, yeah. that's help. Where is it? I hid it in back in the water cooler out there. That way, every time you get stuck, just go over and take a drink. Then you can sneak a look at the book. Uh, sneak back and... Uh, you're a bright boy, Leroy. <laughs> you ready now, Uncle Moore? Uh, ready? Uh, not from a mechanical standpoint, Leroy, but let's go. Well, 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 here we are again. Well, uh, shall we begin? Oh, I see you've removed the hood, Judge Hooker. Yes, and here are your tools, Gildy. Now, quiet, girls, quiet. Yeah, quiet. Pay attention to Uncle Mort. As a mechanic, I'll bet he's a panic. Yes. Uh, well, come on, girls. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, don't crowd me so, girls. No, oh, what am I saying? I don't mind it crowding a bit. <laughs> oh, Uncle Mort, uh, what's that little round piece of machinery? Uh, where? Right there. Uh, oh, that. Well, that's the, uh, let me see now. Uh, well, that's funny. I'm a bit thirsty. Excuse me while I go get a drink of water. <laughs> Isn't he fascinating? I'm going to ask him what I should do about my clutch. <laughs> Just trim your nails, honey. <laughs> well, I still don't understand why one.
one needs both a radiator and a heater. Uh, and now, my dears, uh, what was that question? Well, I just wanted to know what this little round dingus is. Oh, that. Uh, that's the generator. Number 4B3328 amps, sells for 895 FOB Detroit. <laughs> thinks he's smart. Yeah. Now, you'll have to take it off before you can get the motor out, Gildy. Yeah, I knew that. Hand me the wrench, Leroy. Thanks. Now, all I have to do is... Oh! oh. <laughs> Uncle, are you all right? Uh, just a little shock, my dear. <laughs> uh, I'll be all right just as soon as I get another drink of water. <laughs> I'll get it for you, Uncle. Uh, never mind. I'll feel better if I get it myself. <laughs> I don't know why I should be so thirsty. Uh, something I had for lunch, no doubt. I'll be right back and dismantle the motor. Yeah. Uh, according to my watch, it took you just two hours to take that motor apart. Well, Gildersleeve, I've got to hand it to you. In all my experience, I've never seen a man do so much work and drink so much water at the same time. <laughs> Yes, I've been to the cooler more times than a patrol wagon. <laughs> Better sit down, Uncle. You look a little seasick. Huh? It's not that, Leroy. It's just the tide coming in. <laughs> well, girls, Mr. Gildersleeve has certainly revealed all the mysteries of a motor. But I still don't understand the difference between a heater and a radiator. Yeah. Oh, Uncle Mort, I think you're just wonderful. And I think you're just... Uh... Uh, uh, thank you, my dear. Uh, thank you. Well, I don't think anyone was more amazed than I was. Oh, Marge, I know someone who was. Be quiet, Leroy. <laughs> Say, girls, I've got an idea. How about you being my guest for tea and sandwiches? Now, there's a nice little place right around the corner. Oh, that's, oh, that's, oh, that's very that. kind of you, Judge Hooker. Come on, everybody. Yeah, all right, but I'll have to wash up first. Oh, no, you mustn't waste any time going to tea, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, why not, Mrs. Twitchell? Because you have to put my motor back together again. Oh. I'll need it to drive out to my country place later on. Oh, yes. I forgot all about your motor. Anyway, I'm so full of water, I couldn't have drunk tea anyway. I'll, I'll stay and help you, Uncle Roy. Uh, thanks, Leroy. Run along, girls, now. I don't mind. Oh, Go along, Gildy, old chap. And I hope you know where to put all those parts. I know where everything should go, Judge, including you. <laughs> Leroy, I'm not a violent man, but someday I'm going to play soccer all day with that little all-day soccer. <laughs> oh, cheer up, Uncle Moore. I bet you can put this motor back together again even faster than... Shh, shh. Oh, what's that? Uh, marching. Hey, oh! That is. <laughs> oh, look, the army's outside, Leroy. Excuse me, sir. I brought down a detachment of men from Fort Platt. We were told that there would be a group of Red Cross canteen hostesses here to meet the men. Oh, well, I don't know where they could be. Say, why, yes, that's what I'll do. How many soldiers have you got outside, Captain? 142. 142, splendid. If one of our public-spirited citizens just took the girls out for a snack. Now, I'm sure he'd love to have you join them. Just march your gang over to the tea shop around the corner and ask for Judge Hooker. He'd be tickled pink to see you. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. But right now, I guess most men will agree that nothing starts the day off right like a good hearty breakfast. Yes, give me sizzling hot eggs with plenty of toast. Or maybe some pancakes or waffles. And man alive, I'm about ready to lick the world. That's why grand-tasting parquet margarine deserves a mighty important place on the breakfast table. Yes, spread wholesome parquet margarine on waffles or pancakes or breakfast toast. You're sure to love its delicate, appetizing flavor. And as for those breakfast eggs, try pan-frying them in parquet. You'll find they're tastier. And you'll like using parquet because it doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. Yes, and parquet margarine is grand for baking, too. Because unlike bland, tasteless fats, parquet is a real flavor shortening. And remember, parquet margarine is not only good tasting, it's good for you, too. Yes, wholesome parquet is a mighty nourishing energy food. And every pound contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. So right now, put parquet margarine at the top of tomorrow's shopping list. Remember, it's parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's made by Kraft.
And now back to Gildersleeve and Leroy, who have succeeded in putting the motor back together again and have returned home. More fried onions, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, no thanks, Bertie. I only ate these to get them out of my sight. They look like piston rings, and I never want to look a piston ring in the face again. <laughs> How about you, Leroy? Oh, nothing more, thanks. Well, I think I'll go to an early movie now. Yeah, maybe I'll go with you. Is there a Hopalong Cassidy playing around here anyplace? No, you've seen all the new Hopalongs. How about going to see an Eastern picture for a change? Yeah. Yeah, no, Leroy. When I go to a picture show, I want to hear a lot of shooting. It keeps me awake. Well, I'll run along now. I'll be back early. All right. A careful little dessert, Mr. Gilsey? Well, that depends on what you have to offer. Well, there's some custard and a slice of devil's food cake and some pie left over from yesterday. Or you can have some stewed fruit and icebox cookies. Or fix some fresh tapioca pudding. And, of course, there's still some of that strawberry ice cream. Oh, fine. That'll be just right for me. <laughs> you mean all of them? Oh, no, I wouldn't stuff myself with all of them. You can skip the stewed fruit. Oh. <laughs> okay. Mine takes a wide variety of desserts to make a wide variety of gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I'll get that doorbell, Bertie. Hello, Gildersleeve. Can I see you a minute? Sure. Take a good look. <laughs> no, I want to talk to you, Throckmorton. What do you want, you little snake in the bush? I'm a snake. Say you just stuck me with 142 soldiers. Oh, yes, the army. I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> well, what do you want, Judge? I seem to have lost my watch. Huh? The last I remember, I took it out and set it down to time you when we were at Red Cross headquarters. Oh, did you go back there and look for it? Yes, I was there just now, but I couldn't find hide nor hairspring of it. Yes, hairspring. Sure you didn't happen to pick it up? I'm not accustomed to picking up other people's watches, Hooker. It's a nasty habit that gets you into bad company. You start associating with judges and people like that. <laughs> Cut the comedy, you big clown. Yeah. Now, let's try to figure out what's happened to that watch. Uh, was it valuable? I should say. Given to me by the grand jury after we indicted that fake jury racket mob. Oh, left over from the investigation, no doubt. <laughs> it was not. This watch cost a couple of hundred dollars. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what's worrying you, Hooker? I just remembered. I set the watch down on the engine block. Well, that's funny. I didn't see it when we were putting the motor back together. Oh, maybe it's in one of the cylinders. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, well, that could have happened very easily, couldn't it? Yes, it could. Well, don't stand there. Do something. Help me. Why should I help you, you misguided little nincompoop? <laughs> That's no way to talk to your pal, Throcky. Hey, pal. Oh, come on, come on. We've got to rush down there and tear that motor apart again and rescue that watch before that woman drives it away. Oh, you mean Mrs. Salisbury Twitchell. Eh? Sounds like a nervous hamburger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The minute she starts that motor, my beautiful watch will be ground up into junk. Please, Gildersleeve, please. I'm sorry I was mean to you this afternoon. Well, all right. I'll come down and help you, baby. But first, I'm going to have a bit of dessert. You care to join me in a dish of custard, Judge? No. Come on. There isn't a moment to lose. Now, now. All in good time. She won't start that car. Your watch is safe. What makes you think so? Because after Leroy and I had the motor all put together again, we found six or seven parts we forgot to put in. Oh. <laughs> Well, there's the station wagon, and it looks like the coast is clear. Yes, Judge. There doesn't seem to be any sign of that old battle axe. Uh, hello there, Mrs. Switchell. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. I've just packed some boxes to be sent overseas. I wonder if you'd put them in the back of my car. Oh, Judge Hooker will only be too glad to do that, won't you, Judge? Uh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, oh, thank you. Well, they're right in here. Uh, Look, pal, I'll take Madam Hoity Toity out of here while you dig into that motor for my watch. Nothing doing, chum. I've been through that engine once today. I'll lure the old buffalo away. After all, I'm more of a lady killer than you are. Yeah, they look at you and laugh, they'll laugh themselves to death. Yes. Okay, I'll resign. No, 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 I apologize. Yeah. See if you can get her away from here, and then I'll go to work. All right, I'll take her out somewhere for a little while. But remember, you're going to pay the expenses. Uh, uh yes. Uh, are these the packages, Mrs. Twitchell? Oh, yes. As soon as they're loaded, I'll take them down to the express office. Oh, incidentally, I hope I'll find my car in good condition. Oh, you'll find it all right. I mean, you'll find it all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after I overhauled it all, though, the, the judge called something to my attention. And what was that? Well, the judge is quite an expert. He seemed to think that there was a, well, a, a sort of a Swiss movement in the motor. Oh, he did. Yeah. He thought that if you didn't mind, he'd try to get it out. Oh, well, all right. I'll be in town again tomorrow. Oh, I think he'd rather have you do it, uh, do it right now. Now? Yes, he feels that he could save time that way. <laughs> all right, if it won't take too long. Oh, it won't, it won't. Merely a minor adjustment. Uh, Judge, uh, Mrs. Twitchell says it'll be all right. 
You mean for me to get the watch out? Uh, what's that? Uh, yeah, uh, be sure to watch out for trouble. Uh, take your time, Judge. Take your time. Uh, don't worry, he'll watch out. Uh, and while he's working, would you care to step out for a bit of sherbet? Oh, uh, no. No, I do. Oh, oh what's that? Uh, what's what? Uh, that. Uh, you must have very sharp ears. I can't hear a thing. <laughs> Would you like to go out for a banana split, Mrs. Twitchell? I know a place where they make the drippiest banana splits. Oh, no, no, I really don't... Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, surely you heard that. Oh, yes, those chimes are certainly beautiful. I... <laughs> uh, that weren't chimes. Uh, those is my car. What? Oh, what's he doing to it? Uh, now, don't worry, Mrs. Twitchell. He's just tuning it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like wheeling steel makers tuning up. Yeah. Now, just compose yourself, my dear. The judge knows what he's doing. Uh, say, I know what you need. Oh, you do? What? A nice big bowl of chili con carne. Hey, come, come, Mrs. Twitchell. I know a place where they serve the hottest chili in town. With all the beans and onions you want thrown in free. <laughs> All the consarn ding dang foo piece of machinery I ever had the misfortune to get up. Well, hello, Judgey. Wow, you certainly declared total war on that motor. It's all out. If... Find the watch? No, and I've done everything, even strained the oil. Oh. Say, where's Mrs. Twitchell? Well, I left her at the movies. I sneaked out while she wasn't looking. But you were supposed to stick with her. Well, I'd have done it, too, if Hopalong Cassidy was only there to help me. Oh, what's Hopalong Cassidy got to do with it? He keeps me awake. Anyhow, it's after ten, and she'll be back pretty soon. And, brother, if that car isn't all in one piece, you won't be either. Oh, when I look at all these parts scattered from one wall to the other, I don't think I'll ever get it back together again. <laughs> oh, come on, help me, won't you, Gildersleeve? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Judge. I'll give you just as much help as you gave me this afternoon. No, oh, no, 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 no. No, that isn't fair. Uh, you bet it isn't. All the pretty girls have gone home. Okay, I'll do it myself. I always knew you'd turn out to be a fair-weather friend. Well, it's raining. Well... Come on, Judge Hooker. Say, Bertie told me you were here, so I hurried over just as soon as I got home. Leroy, what are you doing out so late? Oh, gee, I had to come. I clean forgot to tell Judge Hooker about his watch. What about my watch? Well, you left it on the engine, and I picked it up. Here it is, Judge. What? And I did all this work for nothing? Oh, Judge Hooker, is my car ready? Oh, jumping jeeps, Mrs. Twitchell. Come on, Leroy, quick. Let's duck out the back way. Goodbye, Judge. Good luck, Judge. Good luck, Judge. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But first, I'm sure you housewives have to be pretty wide awake in your food shopping these days. Yes, you have to buy wisely. Be sure the foods you get are nourishing, good tasting, and fit into your food budget, too. Well, that's where delicious parquet margarine can help out a lot. You see, parquet margarine, the wholesome modern margarine made by Kraft, just about fills all these requirements. It's nourishing, it's wonderfully good tasting... And Parquet Margarine's economy helps out a lot in making your food budget work. Yes, Parquet Margarine is a delicious, economical source of important food values. It's a wholesome, highly nutritious food, one of the best energy foods you can serve at your table. Besides, every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. What's more, Parquet Margarine is so delightfully good tasting, it just can't be compared with old-time margarines. you like its delicate, appetizing flavor whether you serve it as a spread for bread or use it for baking and pan frying. So if you're a wise food shopper, you'll certainly try delicious economical parquet margarine. Yes, tomorrow, sure, order parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's the margarine made by Kraft. Ladies and gentlemen, from now on, we're going to be on wartime. And if time means money, wartime means that our country needs all the money we can spare. And when you invest in defense bonds and saving stamps, you all join in saying, You're a hard man, MacArthur. Good night. <laughs> yeah. Be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.